Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. I'm going to get the latest update on what's going on with our weather pattern. Could we still have Invest 94L? This is weakening down a lot weaker than yesterday. More likely going to be a tropical wave trying to become a tropical storm as it passes by Puerto Rico. The window is very small, and you can see the ensembles don't even take too many of them, making it even into the Caribbean. Plus, we still have this cutoff flow that's going to be coming for this week, and this is going to bring a major snowstorm as we go in the coming days so we do have colder air now even colder air is coming in as we go towards the end of october beginning of november now when you see what's going on with this storm system invest 94l you can see that you do have an upper level low right here that is pulling everything to this direction you can even see that it's starting to get that shear coming in against this system and pulling everything to the north. You see that? It's not going to totally kill the storm, but it is going to shred some of the precipitation off of it as it travels to the west, northwest. Showing that it has gone down in percentage all the way to 50% in the next seven days, but 30% in the next 48 hours. There is an area where it's going to be after this year and before this year where it does have a chance to form in this in this area showing so far no really impacts there is one model that's showing it could be some stronger impacts towards dominican republic but once again the same model that's showing a tropical storm today showed a cat 2 hurricane yesterday as a matter of fact you can see the area and intensity has gone down just for a chance for a tropical depression before this goes into the caribbean and gets pulled into the west with this disturbance also for central america just going to bring y'all a lot of rainfall it's not going to be no hurricane or anything forming out of that but it is a better chance for something to form up after this energy meets up with this energy and goes in central america both of them regardless going out through the pacific now when you go through the model guidance you see some of them show that it does have a chance to become that tropical storm even maybe a low grade cat one hurricane but you see some of the ensembles also show that it will not make it that much further because of the environment is has all that dry air still in front of it has a shear coming from that upper level low shredding on some of the precipitation i think it's just going to be a tropical wave that's going to pass by the lesser antilles pass by puerto rico and try and become a tropical storm right before it goes into dominican republic a lot of them is showing it won't make it that much further once you get around the 48 hour mark not many take it. And then when it does go, it's going to go far northern, no impacts for Lesser Antilles or for Puerto Rico. And maybe as it goes towards Dominican Republic, maybe have some strength on it. And you see only one of them literally takes it in five days, even making it to the Caribbean. Look at the Canadian. It showed it going towards Florida and turning yesterday. It's showing it's turning a lot sooner for today. When you look at the Euro, it's showing an even weaker chance of forming. When you look at the GFS, even a weaker chance. Now, when you go by the H Wharf, the old hurricane model, it has really broken down, going down to maybe a tropical storm impacts, a PTC, just an open wave at this point. Now, remember, this showed a Cat 2 hurricane yesterday, and now it's showing that it would just be an open wave and maybe become a tropical storm and try and go towards Dominican Republic with some strength. That's a possibility, but I'm showing that as soon as that high pressure turns this, it is going to turn immediately into a uh, landmass, into the mountains. So northern Dominican Republic, you might have to watch out for some, some winds and maybe some flash flooding that could create some mudslides and some big problems. But I'm showing this a lot weaker than yesterday. Because you can see the latest update with the Euro. You get these colder mornings. But as you start to get that system going towards the Leeward Islands, it starts getting broken up, not only by the shear, but by the dry air. And that disturbance going towards Central America just breaks up and brings heavy rainfall towards Belize, the Yucatan, maybe Nicaragua, Honduras, and goes out by Mexico. At the same time, you can see we do got that system coming down. It's going to be that cutoff low. It is bringing colder temperatures with it, and it is going to bring that snowstorm. You see, it is bringing them cooler temperatures, much below average temperatures, kicking in for the four corners, and that's what's going to be bringing your snow. So when you look at the latest precipitation with the Euro, this is the next nine to ten days Showing after you go about four or five days, it does build up to heavier rainfall. That's not going to be seeing snow for New Mexico, even the panhandle of Texas, western Oklahoma, even southern Colorado. Y'all getting a lot of good precipitation, but where you're not getting no rainfall is this whole area right here. Matter of fact, it's growing right here for your drought risk for the next 
few days for October. But you can also see all this heavy precipitation coming through. This is where you're going to be getting this snowstorm coming through. So you do have it for Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. This has been trending these three areas. Higher elevations, of course, only, but anywhere from six inches to a foot or more. It's been trending up to two feet for southern Colorado on multiple models, multiple days. Now, when you go by GFS, it takes it a little bit heavier for Wyoming, going to Idaho, Montana, even Nevada, northern Arizona, getting in a little bit. It's all going to be higher elevations, even the higher elevations of Washington and Oregon as well. And maybe a little bit of far north New England. Now, unfortunately, this is going to leave out a lot of precipitation that is needed. So all the way from the 23rd through the 29th, you can see down here on the legend that rapid onset drought risk is in that filled yellow area. And the dotted area is going to be ongoing drought may persist or worsen in this area. So there's a lot of precipitation that you do need. Unfortunately, you will not get it in this region all the way towards the end of October. But there is some nice temperatures coming down. So for tomorrow morning, you're going to the 40s coming on down again. You're even going to feel like the 30s and the higher elevations of the Appalachians all the way towards intercoastal northeast. Now with the wind chills, it is going to come down again for tomorrow. So you are going to feel in the 20s for a lot of people, especially towards the northeast. And unfortunately, the higher elevations of North Carolina is really going to be cold all the way towards the northwest. But it is going to warm right back up for tomorrow. You're going to get this spike of the 70s and the 80s. And this is going to go all the way towards the upper Midwest. This is a pattern we're going to be in for a while before we get that next blacks towards the end of October and the beginning of November. As you go into Friday, it's going to come down again Friday morning, be nice and cool. And this is where it starts bringing in those 20s from the Northwest. It's really going to be cold, a lot colder than anywhere else for the Northwest all the way until November. With the wind chills, it's not going to make much of a difference for everyone else on the eastern side of the lower 48, but it's definitely going to feel it from the northwest side. You're going to feel like you're in the 20s to the teens to even single-digit wind chills. Now, once again, for Friday, it is going to warm right back up into the 70s. You won't see the 80s up north, but you will see the 70s come right back in the 60s and the high 50s for the northeast, and it will bring the 50s back for the northwest as well. Higher elevations in the Rocky Mountains will stay frozen. And remember, after we go on that little warm up, after the cold air retracts back, it is going to be warm from the center of the lower 48 all the way towards the eastern side. But soon after that, as we go towards the end of October into the whole month of November, this is where that cooler air is coming in with these cold blasts. Another pattern, just like what we see now coming down, but getting even colder, especially for the northwest. So that is the latest information on what's going on not only in the tropics, what is going on with this major snowstorm coming through and the cooler temperatures coming. Right after these cooler temperatures, we do have this warm-up coming just for a little bit before it comes right back in November. So remember that. So don't get tricked by this warm-up coming after the cold front because the cold air is coming right back again. Now, tomorrow I'm going to update you on the rest of hurricane season, what our possibilities are before we literally get out of hurricane season and go towards our winter season with our snowstorms. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Hope you have a great day today. I will keep you updated on what's going on with this big cold front that's going to start blasting through as we go through November. I think it's going to be some very cold spills. And this is where the freezing temperatures normally in November start going further towards the south. So I will keep you updated. Before you go, remember, it is very dark outside. There's a lot of darkness in this world. But the Lord is always shining through, and he's shining through us. So remember that. God is always on your side. Isaiah 60, 1 and 2. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall shall be seen upon thee. Amen. Hope you have a great day, everybody, and I hope God blesses every single one of y'all out there going through some issues because there's a lot going on and people really need help everywhere. So I do pray that God does put his hand out and extends his help to every single one of y'all out there that do believe and need him because he is there for you. I wish the best for every single one of y'all. And remember, all glory does go to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh, and I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever.
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. For those that are down or depressed, because I can feel some of that out there, just shine. God loves you. No matter what you think of yourself, he sees the best out of you, the best out of everyone and always. Thank <laughs> you.